चमक तुझ से पाते हैं सब पाने वाले चमक तुझ से पाते हैं सब पाने वाले चमक तुझ से पाते हैं सब पाले मेरा ताजदार मदीना رسول اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم Most honorable and respectable elders, brothers and sisters, lovable youngsters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh By the grace of Allah Almighty Jalla wa Ala and through the Karam Nawazi of Huzu Jana Jana Rasul Akram Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sallam Today at the Muhaddis Al-Azam Mission in Blackburn we will be having the third module out of eight modules on the prophetic seerah, the noble and blessed life of the best of creation, the light of humanity, the purpose of our existence, Rasul Akram sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So far we have covered the blessed birth of Nabi Salaatu Wasalam, the noble lineage, both paternal and maternal, and the excellences and the virtues of the lineage of Rasul Akram sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And we have covered the childhood of Nabi Salaatu Wasalam as well as his teenage years. And last month we spoke upon the blessed marriage of Rasul Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Sayyida Tawayyiba Tawahira Khatija Tulkubara radiyallahu ta'ala anha and in our studies we have got to the point when Nabi Salaatu Salaam is now 40 years old how old? 40 years old Just before we begin to look at what we intend to look at today, I just want to very quickly go through what we have already covered in a little bit more detail. Because I see a lot of new faces here on the brother's side, that is. And Sometimes when you're joining a class or a course, two, three, four sessions into the class or the course, it's quite difficult because you've not really been there from the beginning. So you're filling the gaps. Ikhtisar ke saath, very quickly and briefly, the points, key points are on the board. If you weren't here for the first two modules, then I would advise that you write down the bullet points that you will see on the board in front of you. Nabi Salaatu Salaam's prophetic seerah can be separated into three parts. The first part, which we've covered in the first two modules, is from his blessed birth up until the age of 40 the period before the announcement of prophethood. Number two, from the age of 40 until the age of 53. This 13 year period
which we will begin to look at today, this 13 year period in Al Makkatul Mukarramah is the second part in the life of the Prophet. And the third part in his noble and blessed life is from the age of 53 until the age of 63, when he was veiled from this dunya. And this period is a period of 10 years in the blessed and noble city of Al Madinatul Munawwara. This 10 year period after the migration of Rasul Akram. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. <coughs> Mashallah, I can see some brothers uh, writing this down. Those who are not writing, I'm assuming you already know this. On the basis that you are here for the first two modules. So this gives us an overview of the life of the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And it can be split into three parts. Okay. Moving on. Nabi Salatu Salam's blessed birth took place on Monday, the twelfth of Rabi Ul Awwal. Those who were here. Last month, Khalibar. Can anyone remind me what does Rabi ul Awwal mean? Spring. Khas door? The first spring. <laughs> first spring. Yes. The word Rabi ul in Arabic refers to the season of spring. How many seasons do we have? Four. Autumn, winter, spring, and summer. So the Prophet ﷺ was born in the season of spring, which signals change. And he was born on a Monday, and the date was the 12th. Born in the year of the elephant. Of that year which is referred to as the year of the elephant. Amul Fiyid. 55 days after the incident of the elephant. Yes, we went through this. Abraha, who wanted to destroy the Kaaba with his army of 300,000 soldiers and 1,000 elephants, had intention to destroy the house of Allah Almighty. In return, Allah Almighty destroyed him and his army. Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashabil Allah mentions all of this in the Quran. Nabi Salaam was born in the city of Al Makkah to Mukarramah in the land of Hijaz, that city which Allah takes an oath by in the Quran when he says, La uqasimu bi balad. His father, Sayyiduna Abdullah, passed away seven months before his blessed birth. His mother said that Amina had many dreams about her son and was told by angels that her son is going to be the Prophet of Allah. The last and final Prophet of Allah Almighty. And we know upon the blessed birth of Rasul Akram many miracles transpired. So much so that through Nur Mustafa Sayyida Tayyiba Tahira Bibi Amina radiallahu ta'ala was able to see the palaces of Syria in Busra. And everyone upon his birth were happy and overjoyed. Everyone except the shaitan. He cried for 40 days. And I mentioned to you last time, the four times when shaitan cried. Can anyone remember? When he was kicked out of paradise. If you want to use the slang term kicked out, yes. And he's thrown out of paradise. Yeah? When uh, Surah Fatiha was revealed. Surah Al Fatiha was revealed. When he was uh, accursed. <coughs> yes, when he became a rajim. A'udhu billahi minash shaitwa. Nir rajim. 
the accursed shaitan, and the fourth is upon the birth of the Prophet which bit tartib is number three. Number one, when he was thrown out of paradise. Number two, when he became the cursed one. Number three, upon the birth of the Prophet Number four, when Surah Al-Fatiha was written. Ibn Kathir mentions all of this in his Al-Bidayah of Nihad. Nabi Islam, Islam, he was named Muhammad. Yes? And I have a book of Fudun Sheikh Al-Islam with me. By chance, I was using it yesterday in a class. Huh? Or Ittifaq, and it's still in my bag. I'm not bringing it out just to show you guys, yes? Allah save us from Riyakari. Baral, Huzur, Sheikh al Islam, they mention in this book, which uh, you probably have come across Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. A scholarly explanation of the famous Hadith of Jibreel. So they mention in here that Ism Muhammad, this name Muhammad, what is his definition? And they say, Alladi Yahmadahu Hamdan Ba'da Hamdin. That the definition, I write this down, the definition of the name Muhammad is the one whose praise and tribute is forever ongoing. Muhammad means what? Ism Muhammad means the one whose praise, thana, and tribute is forever ongoing. This is Nabil Islam's personal name, as well as being his attributive name. So this is an attribute as well. Muhammad is a maf'ud, meaning the one whose praise and tribute is ongoing forever. And this goes hand in hand with the verse that we all know. Wa rafa'na We have raised for you your remembrance, Ya Rasul. So who gave this name Muhammad to him? His grandfather, Sayyiduna Abdul Muttal. And no one prior to the Prophet had this name. And today, in the year 2018, going into 2019, the most popular name in the world, not just the Muslim world, is Muhammad. Yes. Nabi Islam's childhood for two years he was looked after and nurtured by Sayyida Qayyiba Bahira Dai Halima Sa'diya radiyallahu ta'ala anha and it was during this second period of Sayyida Halima looking after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Nabi Islam's blessed chest was open and his heart was filled. His heart was filled with noor and light, hikmah and wisdom. This was the first Shakti Sadr, right? Then, after this incident, Sayyidina Halima returned the Prophet ﷺ to his mother, Sayyidina Amina. Sayyidina Amina looked, looked, after, looked after the Prophet ﷺ for four years, Kamofish. At the age of six, Sayyidina Amina, on the way back from Al Madinah to Munawwara, which at this point is still known as Yathrib, yes, the city of disease, she passes away. And she is buried at a place called what? I'm sure I mentioned this. Somebody from the sister's side. Say the Amina is buried where? What's the place called? G. G. What's the place called? Al Abwa. Yes, Al Abwa. Yes, and the Minister of Islam's father is buried at a place called Darul Nabiya. 
Mother is buried and resting at a place called Al Abwa, just on the outskirts of Al Madinah to Munawwara. And father, who passed away seven months before Nabi Islam was born, Sayyidina Abdullah, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he's buried at a place called Darul Nabija, again on the outskirts of Al Madinah to Munawwara. So Nabi Islam was six years old when his mother passed away. Baqa Saya, before he was born, and now mother also leaves Nabi Islam Islam at a young age. He comes into the care of his grandpa, the Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib. And Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib looks after the Prophet Sallallahu for two years. At the age of eight, Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib radiallahu ta'ala who passes away as well. And at the age of eight, Nabi Islam Islam comes into the care of the uncle, the father of Sayyidina Ali, Janabi Abu Talib. This is Nabi Islam to Islam's childhood. <coughs> and the inner details of all of this we've done. Ye sirf aapne for your own benefit, yes? Just to give an overview. At the age of 12, Nabi Islam to Islam went to Shah with his uncle Abu Talib, and that's where they met the Christian monk by the name of Bahira. Some will pronounce it as Buhaira. At the age of 18, so this is like a timeline, the key events. At the age of 18, Hilful Fudur happens. That peace agreement in the city of Makkah al-Mukarramah that all of the major tribes of the Quraysh came to. That let live, live and let live. That was the policy. Live and let live. Nabi Islam Islam was a part of that positive change in Shahr Makkah. Then at the age of 25, they make a second trip to Asham. This time, who sends them? A woman by the name of Khatija. And that's where they met the Christian monk Nastura. And Nabi Islam sat under the tree that only the Prophet sat under. Sahih. When Nabi Islam returns from this business trip, at the age of 25, he marries Sayyidah Khatija to Kubra radiallahu Sayyidah Khatija who was twice widowed, already had four children, and was 15 years the senior of Nabi Islam. Nabi Islam marries her, setting a precedence for the Ummah. Today, in our society, when it comes to widows and divorcees, we neglect their rights. Nobody wants to marry them. And a number of different negative connotations are placed on these type of women. Out of the 11 Azwaji Mutahara, Ummu Hatul Mu'mineen, out of 11, only one of them was not a divorcee or a widow. And he said, the Aisha radiallahu ta'ala. The rest of them were all either divorcees or widows. But today our cultural mindsets dictate that oh, we can't marry a divorcee, we can't marry a widow. Shame upon our people. And they had six children together. Nabi Islam Islam said that Khatija had how many children together? Though in total Nabi Islam Islam had how many children? Seven. Yes, if you don't have this written down, write it down. Six children, two sons, Sayyidina Qasim and Abdullah. And the third son, as we mentioned, seven children in total, was called Ibrahim. His mother was Sayyidina Maria Kibtiya. And then four daughters, Sayyidina Zaina, Ruqayya, Umm Kulthum, and Batul Jannah, Sayyidatun Nisa al Alameen, Fatima to Zahra. So in 20 minutes, I've just done a quick revision of what we covered in three hours in the first two modules. So now we've got to the point when Nabi Islam is how old? 40 years. I trouble you for a set of notes. So I can follow what you're doing. Nabi Islam now is 40 years old. Remember, at the age of 35, 
Nabi Islam Islam participated in the reconstructing of the Kaaba and he settled the dispute. Settled the dispute which was on the brink of bloodshed between the Quraysh. The dispute was what? Who is going to put the Al-Hajr al-Aswad, the black stone, back in its place? Nabi Islam Islam settled that matter and dispute. Huh? That was when Nabi Sallallahu was how old? 35 years old. Now we've got to the point. Ah, there we go. At the age of 35, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam helped rebuild the Kaaba. Now Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi is 40 years old. And it was at the age of 40 that he received the first revelation from the angel Jibra'il in the cave of Hira, in the city of Makkah to How old was he? Ball on a... You're going to speak on everyone's behalf, huh? 40 years old. As you can see in your notes, page one, six months prior to this first revelation, Nabi Islam began to seclude himself in this cave of Hira. Lost in the ma'rifat of Allah Almighty, day and night, engaging in spiritual exercises, in mujahida. And Nabi Islam began to have truthful dreams, a ru'yatu sadiqa. And there's some detail in relation to how the dreams of the prophets are also considered to be a form of revelation. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, one forty-sixth of prophethood consists of truthful truths. And then, during one of the odd nights, in the last ten nights of Ramadan, because the Ibtidai Wahi of the Qur'an began in Ramadan. What's the verse? Shahru Ramadan al-Ladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. Say Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah number 2, verse 185. In the month of Ramadan, the Qur'an was revealed. And Ibtidai Wahi, the beginning of the revelation. And Jibreel, alayhi salam, appears to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa and says, Iqra, read. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam responds by saying, Ma ana bi qari'in. I shall not read. Sum nadan lok sharati bande. They translate this as, I cannot read. Implying that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was illiterate. He couldn't read and write. But this is against the shan of a Nabi of Allah Tabarak. Allah sent the prophets to guide the people. So if they were not able to read and write, then what form of guidance were they going to give? Sahih? So, ma ana biqari'in, if you look at it from a linguistical aspect, if you look at it from a shani nabuwat aspect, can only be translated as I, I what? Not cannot? Shall not read. And there was a wisdom behind this as well. We'll get to that. So, Iqra, Ma Arabi Qarin. So, Jibreel then takes a hold of the Prophet Sallallahu squeezes Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Alam Nashrah Laka Sadra. Did we not expand for you your chest, Ya Rasulullah? Then again, second time, Jibreel says, What? Iqra. Again, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, I shall not read. Second time, Jibreel squeezes the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gently and Compressing the Prophet Sallallahu Then for the third time, I, Yani, the ayat fully was revealed for the first five verses. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Khalaq al-insana min ala. Iqra wa rabbuka al-akramu alladhi allama bil qalam. Recite with the name of your Lord. And you read in the name of your Lord who created 
created man from a cloth. Read, and your Lord is the most uh, generous, bounteous, who taught with the pen, taught man that which he did not know. This incident which takes place in the cave of Hira. This is also the third Shakku Sada. First one was when? First opening of the chest, expanding of the chest was when? I mentioned it ten minutes ago. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in whose care? Sayyida Halima, around two years old. Second time was when they were in the care of Sayyid Abu Talib. Yes. The Nabi Abu Talib and Abdul Sattu was now 10 years old. The second time the opening of the chest happened. <coughs> Expanding of the chest. Now this is the third time. And the fourth time was on the night of Mi'raj, which we're going to do next month, inshallah. Okay. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi receives the first revelation. Then, not long after Jibreel departs. Huh. So why is it that on the first two occasions Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi didn't read? But he read on the third occasion. All of I could have mentioned. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi recited and read what Jibreel told him to recite and read. Because on the third occasion Jibreel said what? Iqra. Bismi Rabbika Read in the name of your Lord who created you. So through the Prophet Sallallahu teachings we understand that whenever we begin something we should always begin in the name of Allah. This is what Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi is teaching the Ummah. The first it was just Ikra, read. Second time Ikra, read. Third time Ikra, Bismi Rabbika Read in the name of your Lord who created you. So Nabi Islam Islam through his talimat is educating the Ummah, you and me, that when we begin something, we should always begin in the name of the Almighty. Say. Nabi Islam Islam comes back down from the mountain and the famous narration, Kitab al wahi Bukhari, Zammiluni, Zammiluni, O Khadija, cover me, cover me. How old is Sayyidah Khatija now? Let's see who's good at maths. G? 65. 65? 15 years, add to 40s, 55. Right? Say the Khatija now, write this down, is how old? 55 years old. Zammiluni, Zammiluni, Khatija, cover me, cover me. And then, after a few moments, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi recounts the experience to his wife. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said that, Oh Khatija, who is going to believe me now? And the writing is in black, in bold. Page 2. Let's say that Khatija says that, I assure you that Allah will not embarrass you. Allah will not embarrass you. For you protect your king. You assume responsibility for those who cannot do so themselves. You give charity to the needy. You do greater good than anyone else. You treat your guests with honor and respect and you assist those who strive in doing good. I will believe in you. Sayyidah Khatija says, I will believe in you. And I will be the first to do so even if nobody else does so. Uh, let me be the first you invite onto this path that you call. So the first person, and most certainly the first woman to accept Islam is who? Sayyidah Khatija to Kubra Make that clear in your notes. The first person, the first woman to accept Islam is Sayyidah Khatija Radiyallahu Ta'ala. Look at the honor that Islam already gives to women. In a society where daughters were being buried alive, women were freely swapped amongst men. The rights of the mother was not even being fulfilled. But from Ibtidai Wahi and Ilan al 
straight away we understand and the maqam of a woman that a woman is the first person to accept Islam can you say that and that's allowed okay then Nabi Rishat Islam say the Khadija takes Nabi Rishat Islam to her cousin Waraka bin Nawfal her paternal cousin who had knowledge of the Hebrew language and was well versed in the Torah and Injil. And he was an individual who didn't worship any idols. Despite being in elderly years, he wasn't able to see, but he was still Zahni thought Everything was there. Top of page three. So Sayyidah Khadija says to Waraka bin Nawfal that Oh my cousin, listen to what your nephew has to say. Nabi Nizat Muslim then recounts everything that happened in the cave of Hira. After hearing what, <coughs> Waraka, what the Prophet Sallallahu had to say, Waraka bin Nawfal's face begins to glow with a radiant smile. And he says that the great Namus, Yani Jibrail, was sent to you by the Almighty. The very same Namus who was sent to the Prophet Musa Baraka bin Nawfal says, that if only I was still young, when you would begin the call, and if only I would live to see the day your people expel you from your own city. And the Prophet Islam responds by saying that, will they expel me from my own town and city? Baraka bin Nawfal responds in the affirmative and says, yes, there's not been a prophet who has called to the religion and has not faced enmity and hostility and has not been ultimately driven out from his hometown. And Baraka bin Nawfal says that if this happens and I happen to be alive, then I will run to your aid. Not long after this conversation, Waraka bin Nawfal passed away. Some ulama hold this opinion that he accepted Islam. Allah knows this. Okay. One point I want to touch upon here, very quickly touch and go. Nabi Islam did not become a prophet at the age of 40. Rather, he announced his prophethood at the age of 40. Make this clear in your notes. Yes, he announced his prophethood. There is a difference in becoming a prophet and announcing your prophethood. ये सही रिवायत है जामिया तिरमिजी शरीफ की रिवायत जैसे नबी हुरैर रब्बी अल्लाह कारण हु मेंशन्स नबी रसूल सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम वास्त मता वज़बत लकन नबुवा तो यार रसूल अल्लाह यहाँ भी बोला व्हेन वर यू अ प्रॉफिट ऑफ़ अल्लाह व्हेन वाज प्रॉफिट हुड डिक्रीड अपॉन यू सो हाव لَكُنْتُ نَبِيًّا وَآدَمُ بَيْنَ الرُّوحِ وَالْجَسَدِ I was a prophet of Allah whilst Adam was between body and spirit. Between spirit and body. Nabi Rasulullah Muslim was a prophet of Allah from Azal, from Abad, from beginning. So this is a family, a bathil aqeedah, wrong doctrines and beliefs. That some certain exotic speakers will try to pollute the minds of the masses with. That, oh, he announced that he became a prophet at the age of 40. Ma'adullah. And what do they say? Oh, he was Gumrah Ma'adullah. Thumma Ma'adullah. He was misguided prior to that. Now that this is the prophet of Allah we are talking about. This is no ordinary individual. Yes. And to further strengthen this discussion, Allah in the Quran says, لَعَمْرُكَ إِنَّهُمْ لَفِي سَكْرَتِهِمْ يَعْمَهُمْ Allah picks an oath, a qasam by the full life of the Prophet ﷺ in the Quran. Tell me, does life begin at the age of 40 or does life begin at birth? Bolana, life begins when? At birth. Life doesn't begin at the age of 40. Allah didn't say, I pick an oath by your life from the age of 40. Allah said, by your whole life. And no other prophet's life 
Allah picks an oath by except for the life of Muhammad Rasulullah. So that is not the Islam's life begins from birth. Like this, Allah Taala says in Surah Ali Imran, Surah number three, verse number eighty-one. Yes, just getting the verse. Verse eighty-one. Allah Taala takes a covenant from the prophets in Adam and Arwah. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِثَاقَ النَّبِيِّينَ لَمَا آتَيْتُكُمْ مِنْ كِتَابٍ وَحِكْمَةٍ ثُمَّ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مُصَدِّقٌ لِمَا مَعَكُمْ لَتُؤْمِنُنَّ بِهِ وَلَتَنْسُرُنَّ وَلَتَنْسُرُنَّ But if a prophet was to come in your time, and not any prophet, not any messenger, the best of prophets, the leader of the messengers, if Muhammad Rasulullah was to come in your time, Allah takes his covenant from them. From who? From all of the prophets. From Adam Islam to Sayyidina Isa The first prophet to the last prophet before Nabi Islam came into this dunya. Nabi Islam, Allah Almighty takes a covenant. Allah Almighty takes this covenant from the prophets. That if the Prophet was to come in your time, though Allah knew that he wouldn't come in their time, Allah knew this. This was in the knowledge of Allah. No doubt, Allah's knowledge is perfect. But Allah wanted to highlight that Gal Sari Sarkar di. My man at the back knows that. Gal Sari Sarkar di. Everything is about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Huh? That you must believe in him and you must assist him, aid him, help him. Tell me, are those prophets going to believe in him when he himself, Allah, by way of the argument, he only became a prophet at the age of 40? This is nonsense. And this is the fitna of the adversaries and the opponents of Islam. And let me tell you this as well. Some people use this word, uh, this verse. That we found you some people will translate as this as what? Well. We found you lost and we guided you. And then I see some people, friends and family who share these uh, verses and this tarjama, this translation on their WhatsApp and on Facebook. Ye galthef. Ashraf Ali Tamian and the others who translated the Quran, the tarjama of the Quran. And if you want to know whether the tarjama, the translation that you're reading is right or wrong, look at this verse. In Surah Al-Duha, yes? So if that person who is translating the verse, translates it as we have found you lost, we found you lost and guided you, that's the wrong translation. Allah has that azim wa barakat mujaddid the deen of millah. Mawlana Shah Ahmad Riza Khan in the Kanzul Iman. They translate the very same verse with the qalam of ishq and mahabbat. They translate this verse as we found you immersed in our love and we brought you closer to us. Subhanallah. You see the difference? One is without adab, one is with adab. And whenever we talk about the Prophet Wasallam, we should always talk out of adab. This is now becoming takrir, huh? Coming back to what we are uh, discussing, the Nabi Islam even said this as well. Well, like I know is the Rabi, that I recognize those trees and bushes and suburbs that before Ilani Nabuwat and Risalat would say to me, Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah. Imam uh, Behaki mentions this revival in his Dalai al Nabuwat. Before the announcement of prophethood, trees and inanimate objects, stones, shajar and hajar, they would say, Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah. Yes. And to further strengthen the discussion, Sayyidina Isa Islam was half a day old, according to some Mufassirun. He was half a day old, Surah Maryam, that the people of the time accused Sayyidina Maryam. So what did she do? She did Ishara towards Sayyidina Isa Islam. Yes. And Surah Maryam, Surah 19. Those of you writing your references down. 
that they did ishara towards the 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 child and the people said that how is it possible for him to speak uh, but Allah gave that child who was half a day old the ability to speak Rasul te na Nabi te Janab Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam and what did he say inni Abdullah first thing I am the slave of Allah atani al kitaba Allah will grant me a book he's not being given the book yet which book was Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam given Injil He's not being given the book, but he has knowledge of the fact that he'll be given the book. This is Surah number 19, verse number 30. And half a day old child says what? That Allah will give me a book, he will grant me and give me a book, and Allah has made me a prophet of Allah. He has made me a prophet of Allah. And remember the rule. Qadi has mentioned this rule, Qaida in Ashifa, and other ulama do not call this Qaida as well. That whatever the previous messengers and prophets were given in terms of maqam, rank and status, and in terms of mu'jizah, miracles, Nabi Islam was even given, he was either given equal to that or greater than that. So if Isa Islam is saying that he is a prophet at half a day old, he's half a day old in one narration. Then what is the maqam of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Isa al-Islam is muqtadi, Nabi al-Islam is, is muqtada. Isa al-Islam is follower, Nabi al-Islam is, is imam, he is leader. This is wrong. Yes. Wrong for people to say. Okay. For six months, bottom of page three, for six months the revelation Stop. After six months, Nabi Islam receives revelation of Surah Al Mudathir. Yes, Surah number 74. And if I'm on my phone, it's only to get the verses. Yes, I'm not updating my social media. Ya ayyuhal mudathir. Qum fa andir. Wa rabbaka fa kabbir. Wa thiyabaka fa tahir. Now these verses were revealed. So the first five verses were what? From Surah Al Alaq. Then the second revelation after six months. Second revelation are the verses from Surah Al Mudathir. The first five verses of Surah Al Mudathir. Okay. And then after that revelation continued without any interruption, as and when the need arose. Yes. And on this occasion, on this occasion of the revelation resuming, after how many months? Six months after the initial revelation. Nabi Islam Islam saw Jibrail in his true form. The Qubat of the Nazar Mubarak of Nabi Islam Islam. The strength of the blessed eyesight of Nabi Islam Islam. That he saw Jibrail in his true form. And what is the true form of Jibrail? Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani says that other ulama have written that Jibreel's true form is that he has 600 wings. And on this occasion, after six months, first revelation, after six months, on this occasion, Nabi Islam saw Jibreel sitting on a chair on the horizon in his true form. How many wings? And the distance of one wing is from the east to the west. And then you have the audacity to say, he's like you and me. Tell me, when was the last time you saw Jibreel in his true form? Huh? nadani hai, jahalat hai, that you look to lower the status of Rasul Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No, don't fall into the trap of the shaitan. Nabi Islam Islam's maqam is bara al bara. His status is untouchable. Don't call him God, don't call him the Son of God. These are only two things that you don't say. Aside from this, whatever you say in the praise of the Prophet you will never be able to match the praise that Allah has given you. Huh? But, uh, Jibreel, the Prophet saw Jibreel 
in its true form, 24,000 times. Write this down. Ibn Adi mentions this. Who? Not my son. Huh? I only have a daughter yet. Huh? Make the watch. But Ibn Adil, the son of Adil, fi tafsiri, he, he mentions in his tafsir that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw Jibrail, yani Jibrail ka ana jana. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw Jibrail came into Bargai Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 24,000 times. Gal bich ho raha. And out of 24,000 times, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam only saw Jibreel twice in his true form. True form is how many wings? 600 wings. Every other time, uh, who's good at maths? <coughs> 24,000 take away 2. Uh, 23,990. Every other time Jibreel would come to Bargai Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Jibreel would come in the form of a human being. And the Shaykh of Islam mentioned the very same thing. Yes, this is the hadith of Jibreel, right? If you do mutalia of this, then you'll understand. The other times he would come in the form of a human. Yes. So now for some people who don't accept Noor, or don't believe that Noor can come in the form of Bashar, this is going to be problematic. Sahih? The Jibreel in his Asr was created from what? Noor. All angels are created from? Noor. They are created from light. But whenever Jibreel would come, he would come in the form of a Bashar. Sahabi by the name of Dihya Qalbi. Write this down. These are little pearls. Yes, I might go over today by 5-10 minutes, I will tell you in advance. <laughs> Jibreel would come in the form of a human being. So, Jere log jagre kane noor bashar par. Kis, kis buniyat par jagra kane? Ye wohi surah tane, surah Maryam ne. Surah number 19, very quickly just to uh, deal with this as well. That when Allah Almighty sent His Spirit, فَأَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهَا رُوحَنَا فَتَمَثَّلَ لَهَا بَشَرًا سَوِيَّا Sahih? Surah number 19, verse number 17. But when Allah sent His Spirit to Sayyidah Maryam, in one narration she was 13 years old, in another narration she was 20 years old, Allah sent His Spirit, رُوحَنَا His Spirit, referring to who? Jibreel, Allah sent His Spirit to Sayyidah Maryam in the form of a human being. Ye Nasr Quran, which tells you and me that the changing of appearance and God does not affect the originality. Asal me Jibreel is made from what? Noor. But the fact that He comes in the form of a human doesn't change His originality. Do we understand? <coughs> They have no leg to stand on. And they do jagri with who? Not pare lekhe Students of knowledge like myself. They do jagri with people who are sitting there sadhe. Huh? Kaha nika hai? Where is it written? And who are you asking? The local shopkeeper. Who are you asking? The guy who goes to work 9 to 5. Who are you asking? The guy who minds his own business. Sister who? Huh? Ask the people of knowledge. Do you understand my point? This is a shararat and a game of these people. Where is it written? Kaha likha hai? And who are they asking? Juhala. Ask the ulama. And they will tell you where it is written. Huh? Revelation resumes. Let's move on. Okay? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi is instructed to invite the people to Islam. And this invitation to Islam is of three periods. How many periods? Three. Three. Three periods over five years. Make it clear in your notes. Top of page four. Three periods over five years. First period. 
which lasted for three years. Nabi Islam secretly invites people to Islam. <coughs> yes? In this first period, Sayyidina Ali Murtaza accepts Islam. He's the first child to accept Islam. In this first period, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq accepts Islam. He is the first man to accept Islam. In this first period, Sayyidina Zayd bin Harith accepts Islam. The first free slave to accept Islam. And as you can see, names on the bottom of page 4. Azim, Sahaba Ikaram, who accepted Islam through the propagation of Afbal al Bashar Ba'd al Anbiya, with Tahqiq Sayyidina Abu Bakr al Siddiq. Sayyidina Uthman accepted Islam in this first period. Sayyidina Zubair bin Awam, Awam accepted Islam in this first period. Sayyidina Abdul Rahman bin Auf accepted Islam in this first period. Sayyidina Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas accepted Islam in this first period. Sayyidina Talha bin Ubaidillah accepted Islam in this first period. Then others, Abu Ubaida ibn Jamah, Abu Salama Abdullah bin Abdul Asad, Arkam bin Arkam, Uthman bin Ma'zun, and his brothers Qudama and Abdullah, Rabbi Allah ta'ala anhum, Allah be pleased with them all. All of these Sahaba accepted Islam in this first period. Then top of page 5, Sayyidina Abu Dhar al Khafari accepts Islam in this first period of three years. Sayyidina Shuaib al Rumi radiallahu ta'ala anhu accepts Islam. And not just male Sahaba, but females also accept Islam. Sayyidina Fatima bint Khattab, the sister of Sayyidina Umar al Farooq. And we'll come to this later at the end how Sayyidina Umar accepts Islam. She and her husband Sa'id bin Zayd, they accept Islam in this first period. Umm Fazal, can you see Umm Fazal? Top of page 5, second line. Who is this Umm Fazal? This Umm Fazal is the wife of Sayyidina Abbas radiallahu ta'ala. <coughs> Write it down. The wife of Sayyidina Abbas. Sayyidina Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa who accepted Islam after the battle of Badr, a lot later. But his wife accepted Islam in the early days. Imagine that, living in a home where your husband doesn't practice the same religion that you practice. But how brave and courageous were they? Allah gave them this prayer. Say the Asma bint Abi Bakr, the eldest daughter of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, she accepts Islam as well in this first period. And in this first period, Nabi Islam for three years, secretly calls people towards Islam and then begins to propagate Islam in Darul Arkam. Darul, the house of Sayyidina Arkam bin Arkam radiallahu ta'ala anhu, which was situated near the mountain of Safa. So secretly, hiddenly, they were meeting and they were learning about Islam. And from this we learn the first lesson. Oh, we learn a very important lesson, should I say, that Nabi Islam didn't build a masjid first, but Nabi Islam established a madrasa. Today, as a Sunni community, and you don't need to edit this part, huh? today, as a Sunni community, illa mashallah, we spend our money, our resources and we spend the chanda that is gathered of the people in building masajids. Sahira. Eight million pound masjid not too far from here in Accrington. Two million pound masjid. One million pound masjid. Hundreds and thousands spent on the extension of the Guzu Khana in the masjid. Refurbishment of the Ghusl Hana in the masjid. Our money is being spent in the wrong places. We shouldn't be spending our money just on massages, but more importantly, we should be spending our money on education. Knowledge is the root of all good. But unfortunately, again, I generalize here. Those places that are doing good are doing good. Yes? Those who are doing good are doing good. When we look at it across the board, unfortunately, I, our priorities, keyword, 
our priorities are in the wrong place. Yes. So from this we establish the key lesson. We learn the key lesson that we must establish madarisis first, then worry about masajids. Okay. So this was the first period. Then Nabi Islam is given order by Allah Almighty to invite his nearest kinsman, فَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ The second period now. To invite the nearest kinsmen, to warn them. So we have two famous incidences here. The first, Nabi Islam stands at the foot of the mountain of Safa and calls all of the Quraysh, his tribesmen, his kinsfolk, and he tells them that if I was to inform you about an enemy, and this is on page 6, if I were to tell you of Quraysh, of enemy horsemen riding in the outskirts of this mountain, in that valley, who have come and are ready to attack you and seize your properties, would you believe me? And all of them said, Naam. Yes, we will believe you, for we know that we have never told a lie. You are Al-Ameen, you are As-Sadiq, you are the trustworthy one, you are the truthful one. When Nabi Islam heard this confirmation of the Quraysh, Nabi Islam said to them that I have come and I am telling you of something far more severe than the enemy that is behind a mountain that may attack you. Nabi Islam said, I inform you of an, of an of approaching and severe torment that will befall those who disbelieve Allah Almighty. Yes. And then Nabi Islam delivers full sermon here. Can we see that? Bottom of page 6. I'm going to give my voice a little rest now. Uh, I've been teaching since 9.30. Just a bit, huh? So read what the Prophet said. Hmm? Well, so I get my breath. Huh? When Nabi Islam made this address to the Quraysh, most of them rejected it. They walked away. Like in, there was one who crossed the limits and he was the uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu Abu Lahab. That may your hands dry up. Is this the reason you have called us here? And he was inappropriate in his remarks and he insulted the Prophet and ultimately broke the heart of Nabi Allah Almighty said to his beloved Habib you don't say anything I will respond and Allah revealed the surah Tabbat Yada Abi Lahab Ila Akhir okay so this is when Surah Al-Lahab was revealed that famous incident and the other incident we find on the bottom of page Five, going on to six. Nabi Islam invited his relatives for a dawah, treating them with honor and respect. And Nabi Islam said to them, bottom of page five, I have been sent as a prophet first to you, O sons of Abdul Muttalib, then to all of mankind. You have already witnessed many miracles through me. Now, who amongst you will follow me as a brother and as a friend? Nobody took much notice, top of page 6. They all remained silent. But the young Ali, who was 13 years old at this point, he stands up and he says that I will be the first to join and I will help you. And this was now uh, open ilan by Sayyidina Ali Murtaza. First was hidden ilan or hidden acceptance. Now it's an open announcement of who? Sayyidina Ali Muqtaza. 
Nabi Islam turned to Sayyidina Ali with a warm gaze and caressed his head with his gentle hand and reassured Sayyidina Ali Murtaza This is the second period. And the third period was an open invitation to all. Top of page seven. Allah Tabarak Ta'ala says, فَأَصْدَعْ فَأَصْدَعُ بِمَا تُؤْمَرْ What is it? فَأَصْدَعْ فَأَصْدَعْ بِمَا تُؤْمَرْ Surah Al-Hijjah, Surah number 15, verse number 94. Open invitation to all. So now the practices of the disbelievers of Makkah were openly condemned. And the lines were drawn and ingrained idolaters like Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab, Walid ibn Mughira, Umayya bin Khalaf, and others, they begin their hostilities towards the Prophet And when Nabi Islam openly announces his Islam to all and invites them to the religion, that's when the period of oppression and torment begins. The politics of Mecca, they turn towards the Prophet and his companions with aggression, oppression and torment. And there are many vaqiyat here mentioned in your notes. Just read through that. Sin Habab, how he was treated by the polytheists of Makkah, that he was made to lie down on a fiery, or fiery, should I say, cold. He was made to lie down on fiery cold. So much so that the meat the fat on his body began to burn. And he was a blacksmith who had money owed to him by some idolaters. And those idolaters said to him, Mushrikeen, that first reject Muhammad and we will repay our debts to you. Said Habab says what? I will never reject him. I am by his son. And through this now we begin to understand and appreciate the sacrifices and the qurbaniyah of the Sahaba Ikram for this religion. Sayyidina Bilal Habshi's story is famous. How he was ruthlessly tortured by his master Umayyah bin Khalaf, bottom of page 7. And he was made to lie down on the scorching sand and huge rocks were placed on his blessed chest. And sometimes he was dragged through the cities and the streets of Makkah al Mukarramah. And he was left without food and water for days and nights on end. And he was made to wear iron armor and placed under the scorching sun. And his body fat would begin to melt. And he would be told to leave his religion, top of page 8. But Umayyah bin Khalaf, who told him to leave his religion, said the Bilal, Valiantly responds by saying, Ahad, Ahad, Allah is one, Allah is one. Yes. <coughs> this is how Sayyidina Bilal Habshi suffers at the hands of the idolaters. Then, then you have a full family. Sayyidina Ammar bin Yasir. His family, father is called Yasir, mother is called Sumayya. If it's not in your notes, write it down. Father is called Yasir. They were the first family to accept Islam. Mother, father and son. Ammar bin Yasir. Father is called Yasir. And mother is called Sumayya. This Sumayya is the first martyr in Islam. And again, Islam gives this honor to women. That the first person to give their life for the sake of this religion wasn't a man, it was a woman. Say that Sumayya. 
Abu Jahl was responsible for her martyrdom. Abu Jahl said to her, leave the religion of Muhammad. And she refused to abandon the religion. And Abu Jahl kept on insisting. And Sayyidah Sumayya spat in the direction of Abu Jahl. So Abu Jahl ties her arms and her legs by a rope to a camel, or to two camels, and then beats the camels and they drag her body, and it, like this, her arms come out of her socket. Despite this, she still says, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. So Abu Jahl takes a spear and pierces it through her body. And she becomes the first martyr in Islam. Sayyidah Sumayya, radiyallahu ta'ala. Other Sahaba suffered as well at the hands of the Mushrikeen in Mecca. Zinira, who was the slave girl of Sayyidina Umar Farooq, she suffered all kinds of torment at the hands of the idolaters. And because of the way Abu Jahl struck her once, she lost her eyesight. So Abu Jahl mocked her. And said, see, Lat and Uzzah have blinded you. Lat and Uzzah were names of idols of that time, yes? Lat, Uzzah, Manat, Kubun. These were the four main names of the idols of that time. And she says, again, with courage and bravery, no, by Allah, Wallahi, they are not the ones who have blinded me. Lat and Uzzah can neither harm me nor can they benefit me. Surely my Lord will give my sight back to me. What happens, the next morning she wakes up and by the Qudra of Allah Almighty, her eyesight is restored. So yes, they suffered. Yes, they went through difficulties and hardships. And no doubt, this period is the period of Islamophobia in Makkah. Yes, you all know what Islamophobia is, right? This period now, you can write that down as well. This is the period of Islamophobia. The mushrikeen in Makkah are totally against Islam. You think we have it bad living in the West? Nothing, not even a fraction compared to what the Sahaba went through in the early days of Islam. Verbal abuse, physical abuse. Nabi Islam himself suffered verbal abuse at the hands of the disbelievers of Makkah. He was called a poet and a madman. Ma'adallah. A magician, so on and so forth. And on one occasion, Uqba ibn Abi Mu'id, or Mu'id, depending on your pronunciation, he wraps a shawl around the blessed neck of the Prophet. And he begins to strangle Nabi Islam. Top of page 9. Sayyidina Abu Bakr al Siddiq comes just in time, pushes Uqba away, and yells at him that, Will you murder a man? Simply because he comes with clear proofs from his Lord and he says, Rabbi Allah, that my Lord is Allah. And then what happens? They begin to beat up Abu Bakr Siddiq. Another famous incident. Nabi Islam is praying there. The Ka'bat al-Sharifa, Abu Jahl, who sat there with his cronies. They observe Nabi Islam praying. So he urges one of them, he challenges one of them that who will take the entrails of you know, the intestines of a camel that was slaughtered the day before and place it on the back of Muhammad when he is in sajda. Abu Jahl said this. So one of them stands up, wretched individual. And he does this. That whilst Nabi Islam is in sajda, he places the intestines of a stomach, uh, uh, the intestines of the stomach of a camel on the back of Rasul Yaqam sallam on his shoulders. And then they begin to laugh at Nabi Islam. And say that Fatima is the one who comes. Say that Fatima is now around nine years old when this incident happens. Say that Fatima comes. And Sayyidah Fatima to Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha, 
she removes the entrails of her sh father's shoulders and then she turns around to the mushrikeen in Makkah, Abu Jahl and his followers and shouts at them and after Nabi Salaam finished his prayer he turned to the Quraysh the mushrikeen in Quraysh and he said, Allahumma alayka bi Qurayshin. That, oh Allah, I resign the Quraysh to you. Or here we are Nabi Salaatu Islam will never curse his enemies, except if his enemies prevented him from worshipping Allah. Varna, the battle of Uhud will do this in a couple of months. Nabi Salaatu Islam lost two of his blessed teeth. He was bleeding from his forehead. Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, curse the mushrikeen in Makkah. Battle of Uhud, third year after Hijrah. Nabi Salaam said, no, maybe Allah will guide them. So when he came to his own dhati mas'ala, Nabi Salaam never cursed his enemies. But when he came to the enemies prevented him from worshipping Allah, then Nabi Salaam would not hold back. And this wasn't a uh, badwa. Badwa is the same in our your language. But dua means not curse, huh? Nabi Salaam would either do dua rahmat or dua jalal. Write this down. Nabi Salaam would make one of two types of duas. Dua rahmat. Dua means supplication. Dua rahmat. Or dua jalal. We never said that the Prophet Salaam did bad dua. No. Nabi Salaam never cursed anyone. He was sent a rahmatan lil alameen. He was not sent as a cursor. He was sent as a rahmat. But Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's dua would be either dua rahmat or dua jalal. Do you understand? And then one by one Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam takes their names. Oh Allah, I resign Abu Jahl to you. I resign Utbah to you. I resign Shayba to you. I resign Balid to you. I resign Umayyah bin Khalaf to you. I resign Uqba ibn Abi Mu'id to you. One by one, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi takes their names. I say now, Abdullah ibn Masood is narrating all of this, page 9. He says, I swear by the one who sent the messenger with the truth, all those that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi cursed or did dua, Jalal against on that day, all of them were dead on the plains of Badr. All of them died, were killed at the Battle of Badr. And thrown into the pit of Badr. Okay. I have two more things to discuss. And then inshallah we'll make dua. One is the two migrations to Habsha. How many migrations to Habsha? Bologna. Two. Habsha is modern day Ethiopia. Abyssinia. So we're going to touch upon that very quickly. And then the second thing that I still have to do is that in the sixth year of prophethood, two notable luminaries and personalities of Islam accepted the religion. Sayyidina Hamza and Sayyidina Umar Farooq. There's a lot of detail here which you can read in your own time. But I have technically 12 minutes before extra time and penalty shoot out. Yes? Very quickly. So we are clear on what's been said so far. Uh, but before we move on, write this down as well. The first converts to Islam. Uh, we mentioned it but it's good to have it as a list and give you something to do as well. The first man to announce his Allah Islam. And he have changed the word here. Not accept Islam, announce Islam. I heard this very beautifully once by a scholar. But Siddiqui Akbar didn't accept Islam, he announced his Islam. Nabi Islam uh, didn't have a shadow. He didn't have a physical. Light upon light, you know yourself, you're all scientists here. Light upon light, huh? no shadow. But ulama said what? That the shadow of the Prophet was Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Did not leave the side of Nabi Islam. 
یار غار یار مزار نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صحابہ سو صدیقی اکبر آن دا رائٹ اور عمر فاروق آن دا لیفٹ اور نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صحابہ جس ایز یو سی می ناو دس ایز ہاو یو سی ایز آن دا دے آف ججمنٹ اور سیدنا ابو بکر صدیق اور سیدنا عمر فاروق دے آر ریفر ٹو از دا شیخین دا شیخین آنر دیم لف دیم So the first man to announce Islam was Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddi. He was 38 years old when he announced his Islam. Or here we have, and Nabi Salaam says, Nobody's wealth benefited me more than the wealth of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddi. Those who revived me have come of whom? That I have repaid everyone in the dunya except for two. Allah will repay them on the day of judgment. One is Abu Bakr al-Siddi, the other is Sayyidina Khatija al These two individuals were pillars, mountains of support for the Prophet ﷺ. During the difficult and hard times, during this period of torture and oppression, they didn't abandon the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ said, everyone, one by one, left me, but Siddiq remained by my side. Siddiq remained by my side. And how true are these words that even today, Siddiq is by the side of Rasul Akbar ﷺ. Sayyidah Khatija, as we mentioned, was 55. Sayyidah Ali was 10 years old. The first child to announce his Islam. 10 years old. And the first freed slave was Sayyidah Zayd bin Harith. And the bee should be separate, one second. Zayd bin Harith. And look here, it says what? First, Freed slave. So people get confused here. And they say the first free slave was who? Sayyidina Bilal accepted Islam. No. Sayyidina Bilal accepted Islam a few years later. After the initial announcement of prophethood. All we through the uh, efforts of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq uh, was responsible for buying the freedom of Sayyidina Bilal. The first Muaddin of Islam. <coughs> so Page 10. First Abyssinian migration. In the fifth year of prophethood. How old is Nabi Salaam now, Muhammad Ismail? Muhammad Ismail is 35. How old was he when he announced his prophethood? 40. Now which year are we in? Which year of prophethood? Which year? In? Fifth year. So 40 and 5 years. So Nabi Salatu Sam is now 45 years old. Yes. And the first migration to Habsha happens. Why Habsha? Because the king, Najashi, was his title. Nijas. He was very tolerable. Devout Christian. So Nabi Salatu Sam knew that if the Sahaba went there, he would welcome them. He would be tolerable to them. That's why it was Habsha and nowhere else. And in this first migration, in this first migration, 15 companions traveled to Habsha. 11 men and 4 women. The leader of this group was Sayyidina Uthmani Ghani. Khan, Sayyidina Uthmani Ghani. His blessed wife, the daughter of Nabi Salaam. Sayyidina Ruqayya, she also went as well. Other notable Sahaba, Sayyidina Zubair bin Awam, they also migrated as well. Sayyidina Mus'ab bin Umar, who, if you ask me, is one of my favorite Sahaba. His story, inshallah, I will tell you one day. A beautiful story. Today, Sayyidina Mus'ab bin Umar is in the very same grave as Sayyidina Amir Hamza radiallahu anhu. Sayyidina Mus'ab bin Umar, he's also part of this first migration to Habsha. Sayyidina Abdurrahman bin Awf, from the Ashra Mubashara, Sayyidina Uthman bin Mazun, who was a blind Sahabi. And Sayyidina Abdullah bin Masood is also part of this first caravan as well, or first uh, group to Habsha. Yes? So they stayed there for around three months. Then rumor began to circulate that the Meccans have embraced Islam. So in the same year, they came back, this first group. But when they came back, they realized 
it wasn't the case. They realized it wasn't the case. Yes? So then a second group migrated to Habsha. 101 companions this time. Okay? 101. Different books of Sira will mention different numbers. Yes? But 101. In another narration, 83. Uh, no, no, I'm right, 101. 83 of them were men and 18 women. And the leader of this particular group was Sayyiduna Ja'far al -Tayyar. Sayyiduna Ja'far, who was the elder brother of Sayyiduna Ali Murtaza. Ten years the senior of Sayyiduna Ali Murtaza. Sayyiduna Ja'far. So if Sayyiduna Ali is how old at this point now? If you're keeping up, you will know. Sayyiduna Ali was ten when he accepted Islam. At five? Fifteen. And his brother is? Twenty-five. The peak of his Javani. He's made commander-in-chief, so to speak, the leader of the second migration to Habsha. Age is just a number. Riyazat ke yehi din hai, burhape mein kaha himmat. Jo kuch karna hai, abhi kar lo, abhi nuri jawaan ko. Yes. So don't let age become a means of distraction. Anyway, with the second migration, the Makkan sent, they sent a delegation, three people, including Amr ibn al-As, who had not accepted Islam yet. Later he did and he became uh, the great Sahabi that he did. And he, Baqaida Istri Kinal, became the governor of Egypt as well. But uh, they were sent in order to bring back these 101 companions to Makkah al Mukarramah. And a very famous incident takes place in the court of Najashi. And they begin to present gifts to Najashi in return for the Muslims. But Najashi calls the Muslims in order to hear what they had to say. And that's where we have the famous speech of Sayyidina Ja'far, bottom of page 12, bypassing all that detail, which you can read in your own time. The bottom of page 12. <coughs> and I give my voice a little bit of a break. Just read what Sayyidina Ja'far said in the court of Najashi. Can you see that Ismail? Bottom page 12. Read what Sayyidina Ja'far said. Ja'far al-Tayyar. Powerful statement and address of Sayyidina Ja'far in the court of Najashi. Summarizing everything. <coughs> A very honest address by Sayyidina Ja'far. Highlighting the state of the Muslims prior to Nabi Islam's announcement of prophethood. And how they've changed. Ismail, go on and read it out aloud. You can come to the front. You have 15 minutes of fame. This 
see you a moment, young man. to what Sayyidina Ja'far had to say. And then Najashi says to Sayyidina Ja'far, do you know from memory any of what was revealed from Allah to your Prophet? And Sayyidina Ja'far replies in the affirmative. So he begins to recite the opening of Surah Maryam. And when Najashi hears the opening verses of Surah Maryam, he begins to cry. He begins to cry. And he says, I swear in the name of God that these words are from the same source of what has been revealed to Musa and Isa. And he says, I bear witness, in another narration, I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. He is the man mentioned by Isa. Had I not been on the throne of this kingdom and had I not been with responsibility, then I would have gone to him uh, uh, and I would have carried his sandals. 
I would have gone to him and carried his sacrifice. Allah. Some narration mentioned that he did accept Islam. And one of the proofs for this is that Nabi Islam offered his Ghaibana Janaza. Yes? In Medina Shri, Nabi Islam offered his Ghaibana Janaza, meaning from a distance. And he only offered Janaza for the Padima. Sahih. Last couple of points. So this was in the fifth year. In the sixth year, two individuals accept Islam, <coughs> which change the landscape in Makkah Sharif and also turn the tide towards the Muslims. First Sayyidina Hamza and then three days later Sayyidina Umar Fadi. Radiallahu ta'ala. Yes. Both narrations are famous. There's no need to go into full explanation and length. But suffice to say the Sayyidina Umar accepting Islam, that particular narration is truly inspirational. That individual who went out with the intention to kill the Prophet Sallallahu that very same individual today is resting next to the Prophet And how he knocked on the door of the house of his sister when he heard what they were reading inside. He wanted to also read what they were reading. And it was through the verses of the Quran that Allah changed the heart of Sayyiduna Umar Farq. Look at the power of the Quran. That a person of such Jalal, such greatness like Sayyidina Umar, who Shaitan would not walk in the path of. Huh? Shaitan would not walk in the path of Sayyidina Umar. The verses of the Quran changed this individual and humbled him. So these two personalities, they accept Islam in the sixth year of prophethood. Details of their conversion are in your notes, but I think it's sufficient what has been mentioned and what we intended to cover today. Alhamdulillah, because of Ismail, we've gone seven minutes over, yes? But what uh, we intended to cover, inshallah, we've covered. In fact, more than that, we've revised the first two modules and we've also done the third module as well. So, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Fourth module will be, are we happy with Sundays? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Sundays get us a bit too much for me because I teach you Bryfield in the morning then I teach in Accrington. And when I get to you guys, I'm, I'm finished. Yes? So it gets too much for me, three classes in one day. But saying that this is now my fourth commitment today. Four hour class in the morning in Bradford. And then went to Cheatham Hill, did a one hour speech there. Then I was at uh, huh? Shia Gila. Uh, I think that's how I spelled it on WhatsApp. Shaykhillah. For the speech there as well, somebody's, I did the nikah yesterday, so they wanted a five, ten minute speech. And now I'm in front of you as well. But Allah give us tawfiq and accept our efforts. So the next class, inshallah, will be on, make a note of this, Sunday 27th of January, the year 2019. And the next module will be on Amul Huzan, the year of grief. Al Isra wal Mi'raj, full 45 minute lecture within the 90 minutes on Al Isra wal Mi'raj. And then we will look at the Hijrah, the migration from Al Makkah to Mukarma to Al Madinah to Munawwar. That's next month. So don't miss out, especially the lecture on Al Isra wal Mi'raj. Our points of Aqidah are covered in that as well. Are we all happy? Any questions? No questions? Next class will be when? Sunday 27th. From? Same time? 7 to 8.30, Sean Nelson.
ایک باری صورت الفاتحہ شریف تین باری صورت الاخلاص شریف اور بناکر دروش شریف اور دیئی سارے تواب اور پیران پیر شہنشاہ بغداد سلطان الاولیاء الشیخ عبدالقادر الجیلانی رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ and all of our kabirin who left this dunya in this month of Rabi al-Thani yani Imam Malik bin Anas Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal Sayyidina Khajai Khajagan Mahbub Ilahi Sayyid Nizamuddin Awliya Imam Ujjat al-Islam Abu Hamid al-Ghazali all of these personalities left this dunya in this month so for their Isa al-Thawab and all of our manhumi marhumat take by Surah Al-Fatiha team by Surah Al-Khlas of the Lakhid al-Ishq of Allah Masjid الحمد لله رب العالمين غير الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم If you learn at least one new thing today, put your hands up. At least one new thing. If you're just putting your hand up to make me happy, don't. If you learn at least one new thing, put your hands up. Good, mashallah. Our being here is worth it. Yes, yes, we got the point. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina wa shafiyyina wa maulana Muhammadin abdika wa rasulika wa nabiyyika wa salli ala al-muslimina wa al-muqinat wa al-muslimina wa al-muslimat. ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتبلينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وفينا عذاب النار اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما وزدنا حكمة والحمد لله على كل حال ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في خلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك أوفر اللهم إنا نسألك العفو والعافية في الدين والدنيا والآخرة اللهم إنا نسألك إيمان كاملا ورزقا طيبا وعلما نافعا وعملا متقبلا وشفاء من كل داء بوسيلة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم إنا على تلاوة القرآن وذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم اجعلنا من التوابين واجعلنا من المتطهرين واجعلنا من الصادقين واجعلنا من الذاكرين واجعلنا من عبادك الصالحين يا هنان يا منان يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين يا الله يكسب تسمع في لغة الجلسة يا بارغا يا الله يكسب تسمع في لغة الجلسة يا بارغا يا الله يكسب تسمع في لغة الجلسة يا بارغا يا الله يكسب تسمع في لغة الجلسة يا بارغا Ya Allah, in light of Quran and Sunnah, we ask you to accept all of this which we have participated in your part of. What we have collectively recited from the glorious Quran, Ayat Muqtad Asaf, from Surah Al-Fatiha Sharif, Surah Al-Ikhlas Sharif, accept this elaborate recitation in your part of. That the reward first and foremost of this gathering and that which we have recited be conveyed first and foremost. Hadiyatan tawfatan, aqidatan, muhabbatan, adaban to the barqa, huzu jani jana, rasuli akram, sallallahu ta'ala, alayhi wa sallam. Ya Allah, then through the wasilah and wasilah, nabili salatu islam, to rasulah ta sattu, huzu jani jana, let the reward be conveyed to all of the anbiya, musalim, suhaba, ikram, ahlul bayti, adhara, zwaadi, mutahara, walidain, kadimain, ulaadi paqam, rasuli akram, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, shuhadai badr, shuhadai pahad, shuhadai karbo bala. Bil khusus, all of the awliya, sufiya, ulama, mujtahirin, mufassirin, muhadithin, aimai tariqat, aimai sharif, abdi ahli sunnati, wal jama'at, اور بالخصوص بالخصوص یا اللہ پیرہ نبی شنشاہ بغداد سلطان الاولیاء محیدین ابو محمد عبد القادر الجلانی الحسنی والحسینی رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ لیا تر ریوار بی کنویٹ ہو دے بارگا لیا کنٹینیوسلی ریز دے تاراجات اندہ آخرہ اللہ اس تو بینفیٹ فون دے فیوز و براکات اللہ اس تو ایمپلیمنٹ دے تعلیمات انٹو آو لائز اللہ اس تو فالو اندہ نقش قدم لیا تر ریوار دے اس گادرین اور آدھا ویچو ریسائٹل آسو بی کنویٹ تو آل آف دوز اکابرین اولیاء سوفیاء ہو لیفت اس دنیا ان دیس مطور ربی اور ثانی یا دا ریز دے دراجات کنچیلیسٹی با آخر اتز بار امام مالک بین انس امام احمد بین حمبر امام حجت و اسلام ابو حامد الغزالی اور خواجہ خواجگان محبوب الہی حضرت خواجہ سید نظام الدین اولیاء and other akabirin who we know, who we may not know of, Ya Allah, we ask you to raise all of the darajat, continues to the akhirah. And through the blessings and barakat of these great noble shaksiyat, illuminaries of tarikh, illuminaries of tarikh Islam, Ya Allah, we ask you to let the reward be conveyed to all of our marhumin, marhumat, grandparents, great grandparents, aunties and uncle parents, young and old who have left this dunya from our families. Ya Allah, raise the darajat, continues to the akhirah. Shall we mercy your blessings, infinite mercy, infinite blessings upon their souls, upon their graves. Bil khusus, meri walete karami ke liye dua, Ya Allah, meri dua that raise his darajat. 
ayatina akhirat Allahumma firhu warhamhu waj'al qabrahu rawdatan min riyadi jannah Allahumma basih qabrahu haddal basar Allahumma nawib qabrahu bi nuril Qur'an bi nuril iman bi nuril islam bi wasilati tilawati al-Qur'an Ya Hannanu, Ya Mannanu, Ya Askubi all those who have attended this gathering shower your mercy and blessings upon them Ya Allah, if they have any problems, remove their problems for them if they have any hajat, fulfill their hajat for them if any of my brothers or sisters have any difficulties or hardship, problems in their lives Ya Allah, make dua through the blessings of studying the seed of the Prophet remove their difficulties and hardships Ya Allah, keep us all firm upon the Surat al-Mustaqeem Muslims who are suffering in China, Yemen, Burma, Burke, Pakistan, Indian occupied Kashmir, Palestine, wherever the Ummatis are suffering, Ya Allah, we make dua remove their suffering for them, remove their difficulties and hardships for them, Ya Allah, let there be ittihad or ittifaq amongst the Muslim Ummah let us all unite upon the aqeedah of the Ahli Sunnati wal Jama'ah, Ya Allah, today we've been informed that Peer Muhammad Afzal Qadri Hafizahullah Ta'ala, one of the Qaideen of Tariq Labbeg, Ya Rasulullah in Pakistan, have had a heart attack. Ya Allah, the elder brother, Ghaliban of Mufti Ashraful Qadri Saab, Ya Allah, we make dua for them, give them shifai kamila ajla nafia, restore them to full health, remove their difficulties and hardships for them. Ya Allah, those who have been uh, oppressed, all of my uh, haq, 24,000 Sunni ulama who have wrongly been imprisoned in Pakistan, Ya Allah, we make dua for them that remove their difficulties and hardships for them. Ya Allah, we make dua that keep us firm upon the Sirat al-Mustaqeem. Allow us to attach ourselves to the seerah and the life of the Prophet Sallallahu to implement his teachings into our lives and to fill our empty journey with the true ishq and muhabbat and ghulami of Rasul Akram Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Those who have facilitated this class, those who contribute to all this class, those who make this class possible, I make dua for each and every one of them. Ya Allah, put barakat and khairat within the life. Brother Hani, Brother Shahid Hafiz Suleiman sir, and the intazami of this masjid bil khusus Hazrat Alama Maulana Hafiz Farooq sir, and the rest of the team here at the Muhaddis Azam mission in Blackburn Ya Allah make dua give them all ajr or jaza in the dunya ajr or jaza in the akhirah those who have amar give them shifai kamila ajr and afia those who have been olad Ya Allah give them nek or salih olad those who have parents who are alive Ya Allah allow them to serve their parents and Ya Allah we ask for a shower mercy upon our parents Rabbi Harhuma Kama Rabbi Yani Sabira Akhri Dawa Bar Bar Call us to Makkah to Mukarrama Barbari Allah call us to Medina to Munawara Make our mouth in the halat of Iman in Medina to Munawara Ya Allah we ask of you Allahumma rizukna shahadatan fi sabilik Waj'al mawtana fi baladi rasulik Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala habibihi Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahabihi Wa ahli baytihi ajma'in